Welcome to the lecture about pediatric dermatology disorders. This is the first of three video lectures. In these lectures, we're going to talk about a variety of common pediatric dermatologic problems. These include eczema, contact dermatitis, fungal dermatitis that can come in many forms, impetigo, cellulitis, and last but not least, lice and scabies. We will begin with cellulitis. And what this is, is a bacterial invasion that affects the skin and the dermis. It can also penetrate through the subcutaneous tissue. There can be complications based on where it is. When you look at this boy in the picture, you can see that he has two obvious lesions. He has one on the cheek that doesn't look like it's much of anything, but most likely that lesion spread to the eyelid. When you look at the eyelid, you see how swollen it is. Well, consider the anatomy. We have the lid, we have the eyeball itself that has a lot of vasculature, and what is behind that? The brain, and therefore a simple looking infection like orbital cellulitis can actually turn into a brain abscess and this is a very dangerous condition. The most common organisms that will cause cellulitis is staph, strep, and haemophilus influenza. And what we can see is something like a simple red pustule, starts off as a papule, develops into a pustule, and then it can become red, hot, swollen, tender to touch, and there may be some red streaking depending on where we see it. Now, cellulitis does not just occur on the face or the eyelids. It can be on the ear, it can be on the, on the chest, the belly, the leg. I've seen a child who ended up having a septic knee after having a mosquito bite on his abdomen, and he scratched it, and just because of uh, bacterial exposure, the bacteria went into the bloodstream and it seeded itself into this kid's knee. Cellulitis can produce fever, malaise, and headaches in addition to the dermatologic features. When you look at these two kids, they do not look like they're feeling very well. So the child on the left is very passive, has a pacifier in his mouth, but you can see the extent of the cellulitis surrounding his ear. The child on the right looks very ill. When you see that, he has a very red, crusty, swollen eyelid, and he is just laying there doing nothing. Now, yes, both these kids could be asleep, but this is the way a toxic child will look to you. So our priority nursing interventions include obtaining the history. Has this child had any form of infection in the recent past? and that would be in the last one to two weeks. You want to find out from the parents when did it start, where did it start, where did they discover a particular lesion, and then how has it progressed and worsened, especially how quickly has it progressed. Because if you're looking at a toxic child in a mother's arms, and this can be from an infant to a toddler to a preschool child, a school-aged child who's laying against his mother, and the same with an adolescent. And the mother says, you know, 24 hours ago this kid was up and around playing. Yeah, they complain that they had this little bump on their skin, and now they can barely even interact with you. That is a very sick child, and you need to get them in front of a provider. Quickly do an exam of the skin. You want to get their vital signs and you're paying particular attention to fever. Assess their pain level and how irritable is the child. You can anticipate that you will be drawing CBC and blood cultures and sending those off as soon as possible. And remember, prior to administration of the IV antibiotics, you need to draw and send off those blood cultures. If there is orbital cellulitis, you can anticipate that this child is going to be sent over to radiology to have a CT scan to make sure that the, the child has not developed an abscess. Some of the other interventions include application of warm, moist compresses, and that's what WMCs mean. 
Now, most of the time, we are just using the prepackaged hot compresses that are supplied. If you can't find one of those, just use a washcloth, put it under the tap water, test it on your wrist so that it isn't too hot, and you can apply the hot cloth on the area and cover it with a dry one so that you can seal in the heat. We usually leave these in place for a good 15 minutes so that the heat can penetrate into the tissue. Heat is beneficial because it helps the white blood cells come to the area due to the vasodilation. You need to monitor these kids for complications. So in the case of the orbital cellulitis, you want to be watching their neurostatus. If you have a child who has numerous lesions and all of a sudden they start decompensating, they actually may be developing sepsis. So keep your eye on these kids. If they have a swollen extremity, we want to keep that elevated. For fever, we give the typical medications of Motrin or Tylenol, or we alternate Motrin with Tylenol. And of course, Tylenol is the acetaminophen, and you will find it in a variety of brands. For children who need long-term therapy because of invasive cellulitis, we have to do discharge planning. Home health has to get involved because the IV antibiotics will be administered at home. So for the kids who develop these abscesses, they may go home on antibiotics for about four to six weeks. So you will be educating the parents about administering antibiotics at home, be it IV or oral, and for how long. Always be sure to let the parents and the child, if they're old enough and can understand, let them know what they're on alert for in terms of possible complications. This sends part one of pediatric dermatology.